Is this guy coming for your job? Let's talk tech. Welcome to News.exe, the best technology-centric news show on the Burke IT YouTube channel, guaranteed. I'm Noah Parker. And I'm Michael Trotter Lawson. This week, we discuss the growing field of robotics. But first, it's time for notable news you need to know. A future featuring the iconic flying car may be one step closer to reality, as China is now testing a magnet-powered floating car that goes up to 143 miles per hour. Researchers at Southwest Jiao Tong University in Chengdu, Sichuan province, performed road tests last week for modified passenger cars that use magnets to float 35 millimeters above a conductor rail. I guess where we're going, we will need roads. Ding Zigang, one of the university professors who developed the vehicles, told the state news agency that using magnetic levitation for passenger vehicles has the potential to reduce energy uses and increase the vehicle's range. While many potential safety issues still need to be worked out, the tests are an encouraging step towards more energy-efficient forms of transportation. Tesla has found itself in trouble yet again, as it is facing a recall of over a million U.S. cars. The recall is due to the windows potentially closing too quickly and not properly detecting obstructions. This is far from the first time Elon Musk's car manufacturer has faced a recall, as they have previously had to recall vehicles for issues due to rear-view cameras, bonnet latches, seat belt reminders, and sound system software. Musk, as he often does, put out a statement on Twitter saying, quote, The terminology is outdated and inaccurate. This is a tiny over-the-air software update. To the best of our knowledge, there have been no injuries, end quote. Strange for Elon Musk to complain about outdated and inaccurate terminology, as he's been acting like a 2008 internet troll for the last decade. Earlier this month, video game developer Rockstar had a serious security breach in which the entire source code for Grand Theft Auto V and the in-development version of GTA VI were stolen. The hacker responsible posted about 90 videos totaling 50 minutes of footage from the highly anticipated game a game not expected to be released until 2025. Luckily, while Rockstar has confirmed the breach to be genuine, they have also clarified that it has not slowed the development of the game, so GTA 6 is still on track, even if it is going to be three more years of getting people to continue to buy GTA 5. This is yet another example of the importance of effective cybersecurity and for situations like Rockstar's effective backups to mitigate the worst case scenario. Amazon is already seeing huge dividends from its investment into the National Football League. In case you missed it, Amazon made a massive $11 billion investment to secure exclusive streaming, light, streaming rights to Thursday Night Football for the next 11 years. Amazon has had their toe in the water for the last several years, with viewers having the option to watch on Prime. But this year, they made a splash with their very first exclusive stream of the Chargers vs. Chiefs game in week two of this NFL season. Amazon said it had, quote, the biggest three hours of signups for Prime during the game. They also took the opportunity to heavily advertise other Prime benefits throughout the broadcast, trying to grow an already massive source of revenue for the tech giant. Thanksgiving, however, was not part of this deal, so the tradition of all American families watching the Cowboys and Lions lose is alive and well. In more Amazon news, the company has announced the highly anticipated sequel to Prime Day. The event is called the Prime Early Access Sale and will run on October 11th and 12th, starting this year. As one might expect, the event is exclusive to Amazon Prime members and is being marketed as an opportunity for early holiday shopping. Amazon also says there will be markdowns on Fire TVs and tablets, and products from brands like Hasbro, iRobot, KitchenAid, Samsung, Lego, Adidas, and more. The new event is another attempt for Amazon to further dominate its competition in the field of retail, as this Prime Early Access sale will certainly cut into the flurry of holiday spending, typically reserved for Black Friday. Many believe their own private actions are a matter between themselves and God. 
Evidently, some churches disagree. Grace Point, a Southern Baptist church that focuses on colleges, caught the attention of Wired for their use of apps the article refers to as shameware. Apps like Covenant Eyes and Accountable to You are marketed to churches and concerned parents as tools to police the online activity of church members and children, respectively. These apps monitor everything their users see and do on their devices, even taking screenshots as often as every minute and eavesdropping on web traffic. The apps then report a feed of all the user's activity directly to a chaperone. After Wired contacted Google about Covenant Eyes and Accountable to You, both apps were suspended from the Google Play Store, though they are both still available on iOS. Security researchers from Kaspersky, a cybersecurity and antivirus provider, have spotted a new series of campaigns focusing on the malware tool they named Null Mixer. According to an advisory published by the firm earlier Monday, Null Mixer spreads malware via malicious websites that can be easily found via popular search engines, including Google. By using SEO or search engine optimization, sites claiming to be providing a legitimate software are appearing above or very close to the actual providers. Then, instead of providing users with that software, Null Mixer is downloaded, though naturally not using that name. Once on the computer, Null Mixer brings with it many more malicious software programs. As Kaspersky puts it, quote, A single file downloaded from an unreliable source can lead to a large-scale infection of a computer system, end quote. So just make sure you think before you click. One of the most well-known and controversial figures in American cybersecurity history is back in the news once again, as Edward Snowden, former NSA contractor and whistleblower, is now a Russian citizen. Snowden ended up in Russia following his infamous leak of the many privacy violations committed by the NSA and its many partners in and beyond the borders of the United States. His original plan was to seek asylum in Ecuador, and his attempt to evade American security sent him through Russia. American authorities then revoked his passport, effectively stranding him in the nation. Snowden has since married and has a child in Russia, and he applied in citizenship in 2020, seeking a more permanent solution for his family. Vladimir Putin granted him citizenship earlier this week, along with 74 other foreign nationals. Therefore, Snowden has now made history yet again as the only man who actually wants to be a Russian citizen today. That's all for today's notable news you need to know, which means it's almost time for our main story. But first, this. Hey man. Yeah, sorry to take me so. No. How could you? I can't believe you ate my fries! Sorry. Today, our main story is about the field of robotics, its history, where it's at right now, and where we can expect it to go in the future. Robotics involves design, construction, operation, and use of, you guessed it, robots. The goal is to design machines that can help and assist humans, and it integrates fields of mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, information engineering, mechatronics, electronics, bioengineering, computer engineering, control engineering, software engineering, mathematics, and more. So basically any field of engineering you've ever heard of and all of the ones that you didn't even know existed. Anyways, robotics is a rapidly growing field as technological advances continue to fuel a dramatic increase of the capabilities of modern robots. Robotics, by some metrics, is a very old field. While the term robot has only existed since about 1920, the concept of automata dates back to ancient times, with mythology such as the Greeks imagining artificial people constructed by Hephaestus. However, robotics was nothing more than a dream up until the 20th century and the Industrial Revolution. Science fiction author Isaac Asimov is one of the most important figures in early robotics, 
as he actually coined the term robotics, while also creating the concept of the three laws of robotics, often referred to today as Asimov's laws. While these laws are mostly just a framework for interesting science fiction storytelling, the laws have pervaded science fiction and are referenced to in many books, films, and other media, while also affecting thoughts on the ethics of artificial intelligence as well. Just imagine if George Lucas became a leading figure in space exploration, or if an actor became popular for portraying a world leader and then became a real-life iconic president of a wartime nation. As for true developments in the real-world field of robotics, most have come very recently. However, one of the most important developments for modern practical robotics occurred in 1948 with Norbert Weiner and his formulation of the principles of cybernetics. Now, cybernetics are a whole field of research and development well beyond the scope of robotics, but suffice to say, cybernetics are crucial to the function of the modern and future robot. The first digitally operated and programmable robot, the Unimate, was installed in 1961 to lift hot pieces of metal from a die casting machine and stack them. Commercial and industrial robots are widespread today and used to perform jobs more cheaply, more accurately, and more reliably than humans. They also have the benefit of working in areas that would be dangerous for people, saving lives in the process. Thanks, Walmart self-checkout. Today, most robots are constructed with a very specific task or function in mind. The idea of humanoid robots with similar motor control to actual people is still very much science fiction. However, at the rate at which the field is growing, it may not be for much longer. You may have heard of Boston Dynamics, a robotics company based in, you guessed it, Waltham, Massachusetts. They have several very popular videos showing off the capabilities of Atlas, their humanoid robot capable of nearly human-level agility. The videos are impressive, and while I don't want to undercut what an achievement this is, they have a long way to go before they can match the capabilities of an actual human. For instance, the Atlas has a speed of 2.5 meters per second. For perspective, that equates to almost three times slower than Tom Brady's 40 time, and roughly an 11 minute mile. Humanoid robots may still be a work in progress. but there are still many jobs that robots can do much better and faster than people can. This is most prevalent in industrial fields and factories, where robots are quickly replacing jobs once held by humans. While robots may not be adept at creative thinking or tasks that require much flexibility, nearly anything that requires the same function to be done in the same way repeatedly is probably better left to a robot. Robots dominate manufacturing facilities today, and business owners are certainly excited about the automation of tasks in their companies, while employees are slowly being displaced by this rapidly growing field. Stephen Hawking, back in 2016, stated, quote, The automation of factories has already decimated jobs in traditional manufacturing, and the rise of artificial intelligence is likely to extend this job destruction deep into the middle classes, with only the most caring, creative, or supervisory roles remaining, end quote. Hawking was right, of course, as we all know that this man, this man holds a supervisory role, and he is definitely not a robot. While the full extent is AI is definitely worth its own story at some point, no discussion of robotics can exclude the impact of artificial intelligence. We are currently seeing the growth of self-driving cars as they start to supplant truck drivers and taxis. It is arguably a good thing, as almost every car accident is the direct result of human error. However, our society is not currently set up to help the people who are certain to lose their jobs to robots in the coming years. And that, unlike any Terminator-style ap apocalyptic future, is likely the true danger of robotics. Accompanied with the trend towards automation is this dangerous period we currently find ourselves in, as people work alongside robots in partially automized jobs. 
Research has shown that robot application is associated with an increase in the rate of occupational injuries in the first two years, but then becomes insignificant and even negative afterwards. Local governments can reduce or even eliminate the effect of robot application on occupational injuries by strengthening safety regulations. However, given the negative connotations of any regulations in a free market economy such as the United States, many people could face significant injury or even death. This takes us to the ethics of robotics. One of the great centerpieces of many science fiction stories is the debate surrounding what makes someone an actual person. Specifically, when it comes to robotics, is there ever a point where robots reach a level of intelligence that would make it immoral to withhold rights from them? This question has been explored in a wide variety of science fiction stories, such as Isaac Asimov's own I, Robot, the 2018 video game Detroit to Become Human, the Blade Runner series of films, and the 1999 Disney classic Smart House. Many of these pieces of media do somewhat skirt the most interesting questions at play here by making their main robot characters appear exactly like a human, which makes for good commentary on real-world discrimination and whatnot. But if a robot had the cognitive abilities of a human while looking like this, or this, or even this, should they receive any of the rights and privileges we have today? We're still a ways off from having to answer that question, but it certainly would be wise to have an answer in mind. Robotics is the future. Whether we like it or not, the ball is already rolling and the slope is much too steep to stop it now. So the question is, how do we handle this situation? We must be mindful of the difficulties that arise from people, especially those in more blue collar positions, having their jobs replaced by automation and robots. Just remember, when the robots are taking over, do not play pop music because they only like heavy metal. The future is fast approaching and an unwillingness to adapt our economic system and society could spell disaster for us all. In addition, while I'm not informed enough to assume a correct position on robot rights, do not be too quick to dismiss it entirely. Maybe true artificial intelligence and robot sentience is just a fantasy, but at the rate of technological development the world has been on, anything is possible. That's our show today. Come back in two weeks to keep updated on the most vital technology news, and consider checking out our blog and newsletter at burkeitc.com. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, press like, and if you want to see more, subscribe to our channel.